Welcome to the firsts, where we explore the origins of the ideas and inventions that shaped our world. Today we turn our attention to an object so ubiquitous, so fundamental to our digital lives, that we rarely give it a second thought, the computer mouse. But the story of the first mouse isn't just about a pointing device. Its public debut was merely one element of a far grander, almost unbelievable presentation. An event so seminal, so far ahead of its time, that it would eventually be known as the mother of all demos. Join us as we journey back to December 9, 1968, to witness a 90-minute presentation that didn't just introduce the mouse, it unveiled a comprehensive vision for interactive computing, collaboration, and a future that in many ways we are only now fully realizing. The Man with a Vision, Douglas Engelbart. Our story begins with Douglas Engelbart. Born in 1925, his path was set, like so many of his generation, by the Second World War. As a U.S. Navy radar technician in the Philippines, he spent hours observing information displayed and manipulated on screens. This experience sparked a profound insight. What if computers could do more than just crunch numbers? What if they could become tools to amplify human intelligence? This wasn't a fleeting thought. It became his life's mission. Engelbart envisioned a future where humans and computers worked in symbiosis, tackling increasingly complex problems. He called this concept augmenting human intellect. To pursue this vision, he established the Augmentation Research Center at the Stanford Research Institute. There, alongside a dedicated team, he began developing a revolutionary computer system, the Online System, or NLS. The setting was the Fall Joint Computer Conference in San Francisco. An audience of around a thousand computer professionals gathered, largely unaware that they were about to witness a watershed moment in technological history. The fact that I remain seated when Douglas I Engelbart took the, the stage, not just as a presenter, but as a conductor, orchestrating a live demonstration of the NLS. He I'm sat at a custom-designed console, complete with a keyboard, a five-key chord key set, and a peculiar wooden box. A massive screen loomed behind him, displaying not cryptic lines of code, but something entirely new. Via a microwave link to his lab 30 miles away in Menlo Park, Engelbart was about to pull back the curtain on the future. What unfolded over the next 90 minutes was nothing short of astonishing. Engelbart didn't just talk about ideas, he showed them live. The computer mouse. He introduced the XY position indicator for a display system, now famously known as the mouse. Built by his lead engineer, Bill English, this wooden device with two wheels allowed for intuitive, direct manipulation of objects on the screen. It was the key to unlocking graphical interaction. Graphical user interface and windows. Long before Apple or Microsoft, Engelbart demonstrated a system using windows, distinct areas on the screen displaying different information simultaneously. He moved a cursor, selected text, and navigated through information visually, hypertext and linking. He showed how documents could be interconnected. With a click, he could jump from one piece of information to another, creating a web of knowledge. This was the foundational concept of the World Wide Web, demonstrated decades before its existence. Real-time word processing. The demo showcased sophisticated text manipulation. Engelbart edited documents live, cutting, copying, pasting, and reformatting text with an ease unimaginable at the time. Real-time online collaboration. Perhaps most striking was the demonstration of shared screen collaboration. Engelbart worked on a document simultaneously with a colleague in Menlo Park. Changes made by one appeared instantly on the other's screen. They even used audio and video links. Video conferencing in 1968. Engelbart conducted a live video conference, appearing alongside his remote colleagues on the large screen, discussing their collaborative work. 
right. This wasn't just a list of features, okay. it was an integrated uh, system, like a holistic vision of how humans could interact with information and with each other through computers. It was the result of years of work by Engelbart and his dedicated team at ARC. This was mother of all demos exactly. The immediate reaction was awe. Attendees gave a standing ovation. Yet, despite the wow factor, the world wasn't quite ready. The NLS was complex, required expensive hardware, and its radical concepts were difficult for many to grasp. But the seeds were planted. Many who witnessed the demo, or learned of it, carried its ideas forward. A significant number of ARC researchers moved to Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center in the 1970s. It was at Park that many of Engelbart's concepts were refined, eventually inspiring Steve Jobs and leading to the Apple Macintosh, the first commercially successful computer to bring the graphical user interface and the mouse to the masses. Microsoft soon followed with Windows. The mother of all demos stands as a testament to the power of vision. Douglas Engelbart and his team didn't just invent a mouse, they imagined a new paradigm for computing. They envisioned a world where technology empowers us, connects us, and helps us solve our greatest challenges. While Engelbart may not have received the same level of fame or fortune as some who followed in his footsteps, his 1968 demonstration remains one of the most significant and prescient events in the history of technology. It reminds us that every click, every shared document, every video call has its roots in that extraordinary 90-minute glimpse into the future. Thank you for joining us on the firsts. If you found this exploration into technological history insightful, please consider liking this video, sharing your thoughts in the comments, and subscribing for more stories about the origins of innovation. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring. But unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the products of this program, the technology of it, lends itself well to an interesting way to portray it for you. So we're going to try our best to show you rather than tell you about this program. A very essential part of what we have developed technologically is what does come through this display to us and I'm going to start out without telling you very much about the program and just run through a little bit of the action that this provides us. So in my office I have a console like this and there are 12 others that our computer supplies and we try nowadays to do our daily work on here. So this characterizes the way I could sit here and look at a completely blank piece of paper. That's the way I start many projects. So with my system that's a could start. I'll sit here and say I'd like to load that in. So, very sorry about that. So I'm putting in an entity called a statement, and that's full of other entities called words. And if I make some mistakes, I can back up a little bit. So I have a, a statement with some entities words and I can do some operations on these. I can copy a word, I can say that word like copy after itself. In fact, that pair of words I like to copy after itself and I can just do this a few times and get a bit of uh, material there. And there are other entities like text. Say after there I'd like to copy from that entity point to that point and it'll copy it, right? So I could get myself some material on my blank piece of paper and then I'd say, well, this is going to be more important than it looks. So I'd like to set up a file. So I tell the machine, all right, I'll put to a file. And it says, well, I need a name. I'll give it a name. I'll say it's sample file. And I'll say, please output it. It says it did. And then it comes back automatically with an origin statement or header telling me the name of the file and the date and the time and who established it. And thereafter, I can always do something. I can ask for the status of a file, and it'll tell me that information. Very small file now, owned by me, last written by me, very shortly ago, etc. and other interesting data in there. So we've seen how we can start with a blank piece of paper and go to developing a file. This file has one statement with a few words in it. Let's make more statements. I'll say copy that statement, and lo and behold, I have another one. 
copy that one. Another one. I can even copy groups of statements. I can say after that one, copy the group from there to there. And it does. I can look at that and say, hmm, probably goes off the screen. It'd be interesting if I could ask the computer to collapse that, perhaps to show me just the first line of each of those statements. All right, please do that. So it did. This is one aspect of what we'll use over and over again through this presentation, what we call view control, where no matter where in the file we're looking, we can ask it to use any one of a large number of parameters for constructing a view at that point in the file that best suits our need at the time. This one wants us to give an overview of the thing. So I'll say, well, I have this. I don't want them all to be statement one, so I'll just replace the word there with a two. And how about that one with a three? 